Okay, so this video is going to be a little tutorial, uh, sort of a step-by-step -step thing on how to add octophonic outputs to an Ensonic Mirage. I've seen a couple pictures and audio demos out on the internet detailing this, but not a whole lot describing the actual process, say for an article which I will be linking in the description. It's fairly simple, but I'd like to uh, just go through it and sort of give a a good description of the process as well as some visuals so that anybody who tries to work on these machines will have a better idea of what they're doing. Now as you can see I've already drilled out the holes for the output so I'll explain that later but the first thing you're going to want to do is take the cover off the machine and have it over here and then empty out all the components. You're going to need um, a rather small allen key there and a couple of uh, Phillips head screwdriver bits and a set of needle nose pliers just to get the little hex wrench bits for the regular audio outputs out as well as the one for the fuse. Now I've already disconnected everything it's pretty easy just uh, a few things that are screwed down to the main chassis we can remove them all here, we'll start with the transformer which is the bulk of the weight of this thing. There we go. Next we'll do the PCB, the power supply board here. We'll set that over there. Let's get it out of the way. An important floppy drive. And finally the main board, which you want to be very careful taking out because there's a little hidden screw here right above the filter chips and right here between the audio in and out ports so if you miss that and start tugging trying to lift it off you might crack something so you want to be very careful to get all the screws out I believe there are six six or seven just make sure you have them so we're going to take that out set it over here in a nice little protective cardboard bit I've also labeled all of my ribbon cables. For instance, that one and the one that goes into the main board from the display or the front panel. And so now we have an empty chassis. Pretty simple. It's like five things to take out. Spin that around here. I wasn't able to get the keypad panel off because move the ribbon cable out of the way here. The volume control goes through the front of the case and this slider is very hard to take off. And I didn't want to break it off because repairing these, I've already done it on one, but it's not very easy so I'd rather just leave it be. It doesn't really get in the way when you're doing any of the drilling, but it still can be a little delicate, especially if you're lying it down on something. But anyway, I digress. So the next thing you're wanna, going to want to do after you've got everything taken out is lay out your grid for the octophonic outputs. You've got eight little holes here. They're three inch holes. Uh, excuse me, three eighth inch holes, and they're designed specifically for these mono jacks. I got them from a site called Tida Electronics. You sort of see them there, but the quarter inch jacks but around the edge, if you count the threads, is a little more than 3 eighths. So, so you can kind of see, unfortunately this camera doesn't seem to be zooming in very well, but 3 eighths will give you plenty of room. You might even be able to go down to 5 sixteenths and still have enough play, but it depends on the mono jacks you get. I bought eight of them, because we're doing eight outputs. And basically what we're going to do to perform this mod is if we come over to the mother or the main board here, these eight chips, four and four, are the filter chips. And the way the Mirage is designed is that the filter comes after the amplifier. So on pin nine of these chips, right on that little third resistor from the bottom there is a direct audio output and it's the last one before they all get summed and sent to the main audio output. Unfortunately that summing adds a lot of noise so one reason to perform this mod is just in case you want to remove the rather noisy output that the Ensonic Mirage has already. 
Another reason is that if you route each of these to its own output, you get octophonic sound, and you can independently pan or EQ all eight of those outputs, one for each note or one for each voice, and create some pretty cool stereo effects. And you can also wire them in quadraphonic or stereophonic as well. I'm going octophonic just because I have a 10 channel mixer and it'd be nice to be able to independently locate each one in the stereo field. And so we're going to tap each one of these little resistors here, the third one from the bottom, wire it up with an 8th watt 10k resistor to each one of these little mono jacks, and send each one through one of these. Um, now I started out by drawing a one by one grid, four holes on each row, and it starts an inch from the left to the center of the next hole, and then an inch, an inch, and an inch, the center of each, and three quarters of an inch from the top to the center, and then an inch down to the next row. And I did this instead of an inch because you need enough space between the regular audio output and this new audio output as well as these new audio outputs and the main board of the machine so that when you put the audio jacks on they're not hitting anything, they're not colliding or causing the problems. And so in, so you, in order to do that you lay out your grid. Uh, you can take like a nail or a regular little awl or something and just tap a little center hole and then I'd suggest drilling out a pilot hole somewhere around an eighth of an inch so that your regular 3H inch drill bit has something to center on. It'll make it yourself, it'll make your life a lot easier when you're drilling these out. This metal is probably about a sixteenth of an inch wide, so if you use nice light pressure and a high speed drill, it should take about 20 to 30 seconds per each hole. And you want to do it with light pressure or else your drill bit will dig in and just rip this metal apart. I mean, it's, it's pretty flexible stuff. But, um, yeah, that's step one. We've got our holes drilled for uh, eight audio outputs, and next step is to wire up our resistors to our other resistors to get the filter chips output to the outside world. Now, another mod that I'm performing, which isn't quite as cool, but it'll definitely be handy, is because this is a, mira a, uh, a rack mirage, the audio output is actually in the, or rather the audio input is in the back of the machine. So when you're sampling and you've got this thing on a rack, you'd have to run a line behind in order to get your audio into it, which is a little inconvenient. So I'm just adding another little mono input in the front of it, and I've got it mounted right underneath where the floppy drive would sit. So there's plenty of room down there, there's really nothing underneath this thing. And that's going to be run on the line either out through the expansion port slot, which is right here, or I'll be drilling another hole somewhere in here to run the line out. And then that's just going to terminate in a quarter inch jack, which we can either plug into the audio input on the back, or to an input sampling filter card, which I have, which I'd like to use, but it can be finicky at times. Anyway, that's pretty simple, just a, nice, a little jump from the front, or from the back to the front to make things a little more easier when it's set up. But other than that, it's a pretty simple, straightforward mod. I'm looking forward to it. Again, the source material that I'll be pulling all this from will be in the video description. And if you're feeling adventurous with a soldering iron and wouldn't mind working on one of these old machines, I definitely suggest it. The audio demos that I've heard online are really cool and really promising. And so I guess thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, just leave a comment. Thank you.